This is Casey Kasem on American Top 40 in Hollywood. Now, what do the Eagles, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Jackson Brown, America, Neil Young, Poco, and Joni Mitchell all have in common? Well, they were all discovered by one man, record company president David Geffen. In 1971, when he was only 27 years old, David Geffen founded Asylum Records, where he discovered and signed those artists I just mentioned, along with many others. He made stars of those acts, and they made him a very rich man. Time magazine called David Geffen the financial superstar of the pop music industry. But listen to this. After only five years, he quit the music business. David said he felt he had to stop and look around and find out who he was. David Geffen's vacation lasted four years, until earlier this year when he decided to try a comeback. He formed a new record company, called it Geffen Records, and the first three acts he signed were Donna Summer, Elton John, and John Lennon. Well, currently, hits by both Donna and John are in the countdown. And Elton would probably be there, too, except he hasn't released a record on his new label yet. And that's quite a tribute to the legendary David Geffen. At number 37 this week, here's Donna Summer with that first Geffen Records release. It's been around. It's called The Wanderer. You're listening to American Top 40, the 40 most popular songs in the USA, as determined by Billboard's weekly survey of record sales and radio airplay from coast to coast. I'm Mark Elliott, holding down the fort for Casey Kasem this week, and the countdown rolls on. Now, our story of a millionaire who describes his beginnings in show business like this. I started at 20 in the mailroom, became an agent, an artist's manager, started a record company, sold it for a great fortune, was in the movie business, and I retired at 33 years old. That's 13 years in the life of David Geffen, the record company executive with the King Midas touch. In 1971, Geffen founded Asylum Records, then two years later sold the company for $7 million. The deal required him to head up the new company, Electra Asylum Records, which he did for three years. Then he moved to the parent company, Warner Brothers, and into the movie business. As vice chairman of the board at Warner, David Geffen was responsible for three films, The Late Show, Greased Lightning, and Oh God. After just one year, he left. Geffen told writer Richard Peachman, quote, It was a profitable experience for the studio, but an unpleasant experience for me. So at age 33, David Geffen retired. But it wasn't fun. He says, I didn't know what to do. For the next three and a half years, I tried to figure it out, and when I couldn't figure it out, I started to panic. That's when David called his old friend Paul Simon to join him at a holiday resort in the Caribbean and to come prepared to do a little career counseling. And what Paul Simon told him, says Geffen, was this. The first thing you have to do is begin. You don't know where it'll take you, but unless you begin, you're always waiting to begin. The thing to do is to just start. That was over two years ago. And David Geffen started. He started a new company, Geffen Records, which right off the bat hit number one with John Lennon's album, and very recently with Asia's first album. The first hit from it is Heat of the Moment. Here's Asia at number 24. I'm Casey Kasem. Well, now we're up to a song on a label run by a man who's currently having his second career as a record company mogul. He's David Geffen, who founded Asylum Records in the early 70s. And as president of Asylum, David was responsible for discovering such great acts as the Eagles, Jackson Brown, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and Joni Mitchell. But in the mid-70s, when he was only 33 years old, David Geffen left the record business. He wanted to eliminate all that stress from his life. But during that early retirement, he didn't exactly sit on his hands. He took the $7 million he'd made from the sale of Asylum Records and began investing it in real estate. He bought an office building in Beverly Hills, a whole block in Hollywood, a shopping center north of Los Angeles, and a 200-apartment complex in Palm Springs. And by 1980, when he decided to go back into the record business, he had made $23 million in real estate. This week, the latest hit from Geffen Records is in our countdown. At number 37, Peter Gabriel and Shock the Monkey. 
the hits from coast to coast.